All right, Rattlers, I got your head coach here. I, I mean, I had to put the three, four defense on them to, to find them. Everybody wants a piece of Willie Swit Simmons. Long day. I'm swimming. I'm trying to say swimmings and not Simmons. <laughs> coach, it's been a long day here, uh, but a lot of fun because there's a lot of attention, even more so this year than last year, on the SWAC. Well, rightfully so. Uh, when you look at what the conference has become, um, you know, with basically two postseason teams last year with us in Jackson State, uh, with the hiring of Hugh Jackson and, you know, Eddie Robinson and, and, and just the, the profile that this conference has grown to, uh, it, I think there's a good reason that a lot of eyes are on what we're doing within this conference. And look, the, the, the SWAC has been, you know, a big conference for a while, but when you left and now you're back, I mean, you can, you can see a difference the second time around, right? Yeah, no question about it. You know, again, when I, when I was in the SWAC, you know, during my time at Alcorn State and Prairie View A&M, uh, I feel we were more of a regional conference. You know, people within the Southeast knew what the SWAC was, uh, kind of in the Midwest a little bit. But now, nationally, you know, you, you talk about California, even on the West Coast, the Northeast, uh, people are paying attention to what's happening in this conference. And again, I think that's attributed to Dr. Charles McClellan's vision. Uh, but also the coaching that we have in this conference, the recruiting that we've done, and uh, everybody really just trying to, to, to raise the profile of this great conference, and we're excited to be a part of it. Can, can you sense that when you're out on the recruiting trail that, that you don't have to do as maybe as much explaining <laughs> as you might have done before? Well, you know, I definitely feel it. And I think now, again, like you said, when we say SWAC, people know what that means. Uh, when we talk about the schools in this conference, uh, people have more of an awareness of, of, of what level of football we have. Uh, there was a huge misconception in different parts of the country where the SWAT was a Division One football program. Now people know that we are, right? And so I think all of those things have gone to, to place us in a great position to, to be one of the premier conferences in all of, the, of Division One FCS football. And, and you're not lying about that because I, I do a lot of research on, on Google search terms just based on, you know, what we do. In every school, one of the leading searches is, is this school a D1 school? I'm like, some people, some, a lot of people ask, is this a black school? Like, yeah. <laughs> they're trying to figure it out. I'm like, wow, you can't, you can't ever assume what, what people might know or don't know. Uh, let's talk ACC, your first opponent, Tar Heels, North Carolina, on the road. That's a big game, Coach. Well, it is. Uh, it's a great game for, uh, for many reasons. Uh, we're we're you know, kind of dubbing it the GOAT Bowl. Um, you know, North Carolina's the flagship Jordan brand school. Well, FAMU's the, 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 the flagship LeBron James sponsor school. So now there's a huge debate over who's the GOAT, Michael Jordan or LeBron James. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to sell it on the football field uh, this, this August. But no, a great opportunity for our players um, to go up against a Power 5 opponent. We have a guy like Isaiah Land who's drawn a lot of NFL interest. Uh, those guys want to see what he does against a team like North Carolina. You know, Xavier Smith, uh, Chris Fadul, all of our pro-ready guys. This will be a great opportunity for them. Uh, and then for us as a program to just show our brand on the national stage, being at the game's national televised on ACC Network. You talk about Xavier Smith. Uh, I talked to him. He has a really incredible story. Uh, coming out of high school, he had a lot of offers were pulled. He's working at Amazon thinking, man, my dream is over before it started. Um, but he finds a home at FAMU. Like, we have a kid that goes through that and has that level of grit and determination. You, you can work with that as a coach. Well, you know, we joke with Zay that uh, Xavier's about as old as I am. And uh, <laughs> now he's been in Florida and them for a long time. But, uh, but again, you're talking about a kid that walked on at Florida and them. Um, you know, he's a legacy kid. You know, mom went to school there. His older brother, Kareem, played football there, war number 19. Uh, and so Xavier just, he got into school and was allowed to walk into the football team. Uh, red shirted that first year. And so we got there in 2018, he had not played. And so he was a second team wide receiver for about a day. Uh, and then after that first day of practice, we saw that we had something special in him. And, uh, and so began the Xavier Smith journey. But just to see his growth and development over these last four or five years uh, has really been phenomenal. Not so much from a physical standpoint, but now Xavier's one of our one of our vocal leaders. You know, he's a very introverted, quiet guy, uh, but now he's doing interviews. He's calling team meetings. Uh, he's really embraced that role of being a leader. And, and that's what I'm more happy to see. We always know he was a great player, but now he's taking that overall role as a college graduate. He's already graduated 
and now he's one of our true leaders on the football team. Well, was that a special moment for you to invite him to, to come represent the university at Media Day? Oh, no question about it. Uh, we, we had him scheduled to do it, you know, before um, in 2020, obviously, before all of this. But to be able to have him now uh, with Isaiah Land, the, the, the nation's best defensive player, according to you know, the accolades, uh, just two phenomenal young men, two men who really embody what it means. They've both been in this program really since we've been here. Isaiah Lamb was in our first recruiting class. Xavier Smith was there one year prior. And so these are two guys that really know what it means to be a Florida a and Rattler. And they're driving that message home to our players every single day. And great football teams are player led. Of course, you got to have a strong coaching staff and let, let great head coach. But great football teams are really, truly player led. And these two guys are, are doing their part to really lead this program. When people talk about the, the SWAC defense, last year was such a great year. Isaiah and James Houston were like the top two sack leaders in FCS football. Uh, James Houston now with the Lions. Isaiah is back with you. Uh, man, he's going to be a monster out there. And people are going to – there's going to be a lot of attention on him. Well, uh, of course, we already know that. He knows that. So we're already as a defensive staff trying to plan – of how we're going to handle all the slide protections to him, running backs, tight ends, chipping him before they release, uh, because you have to. Uh, there are not many offensive tackles in America at any level that can block Isaiah Land one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, he's a special talent. You know, he's strong, he's athletic, he's fast, uh, and he has a relentless motor. You know, 19 sacks a year ago, and many of those sacks were what we call effort sacks. All right? A few times he just really whipped the tackle on the snap and sacked the quarterback. But again, a lot of those sacks were his, was him chasing the quarterback down on the other side of the field. And so he's a guy that just has a relentless motor. And uh, he is definitely one of the premier players, defensive players in all of college football. And uh, you know, the attention that he's going to get this year is definitely warranted. We had a chance to talk to him. He, he had a brief flirtation with the portal uh, because really he got, he, I don't know if emotional is the right word, but during the NFL draft, he's looking at players he's competed against. He knows how good they are. And he's like, man, he should have gone sooner, should have gone sooner. Kind of had a reaction, jumped in the portal, jumped back out. Uh, I look at it as, you know, he, he really has a lot of consideration and, and, you know, passion and emotion for the game to, to kind of have a moment like that. Yeah, no question about it. You know, a lot of us were kind of right there, um, you know, really, really looking forward to seeing Marquise Bell have his name called. You know, we've seen, we've we watched him for three years, you know, work every day, the way he played, the way he studied the film. Uh, the way he carried himself, uh, and we were just all excited about the fact, the chance to have a guy drafted for the first time at Florida and m in 10 years. And when he didn't get his name called, we were all very emotional. You know, we were all very upset. And I think a lot of that led to that knee-jerk reaction to jump into the transfer portal. Uh, he had that brief, you know, moment where he felt, well, maybe it's not a reality being at an HBCU to be able to be drafted. But, you know, after having some time to really reflect and talk to some people, uh, he, he, he saw the, the he did the right thing, in our opinion. Was returning to school for a senior year. Um, he is a guy that's on every NFL scout's radar. He's already on the senior bowl um, watch list. Um, obviously, the East West Shrine Bowl released a list last year. He and Xavier Smith are both on that list. And so, again, he doesn't have to do anything this year, but be just continue to be consistent, continue to work the way he has, and uh, we feel confident that he will hear his name called on draft day uh, this next this next April. If it's possible, do you think that can make him even hungrier? Oh, no, he's definitely hungrier. No question about it. I mean, he has his eyes set on repeating, one, repeating as National Defensive Player of the Year, something that has only, I think, been done once um, throughout the, the history of the Buck Buchanan Award. And um, being a, a repeat All-American, leading the nation in sacks, he was one sack away from the school sack record. So I know that's something that, you know, he has at the top of his goal list as well. But again, just that fire, that passion, that desire, to make it to the next level. Xavier, is, I think, is the youngest of nine kids in his family. And so, you know, he has that, that, he just has that fire about him, that he wants to be great for many reasons. And that hunger is what makes him one of the best football players in America. Probably lowered your blood pressure when he got out of the portal, too. Oh, right? well, I probably would have been in the hospital <laughs> had he left. But uh, I, so I told, I, I, we had a pretty good recruiting class, but our number one recruit, our number one signee was, uh, was Isaiah Lamb. <laughs> Coming back. Uh, we're all looking forward to the Orange Blossom Classic. It is such a big game, a lot of hype. But the only thing that I kind of don't like about it, it can decide so much so soon. That That's kind of the catch-22. I know you just got to play your schedule, but, man, like, last year, that was the divisional game. 
It was. And, um, you know, when we when we decided to play the sign the three year deal with Orange Blossom Classic, this was back in 2018 or 2019. Um, there was no coach prime at Jackson State during that time. You know, they were still kind of rebuilding their program. And, you know, we felt the coaching change may be coming. Um, but we had no idea that he'd have the immediate impact that he's had on that program. So uh, I think when the game was first conceptualized, no one thought it would really determine that. Well, the reality of it is at that time we were still in the MEAC. Yeah. And so we didn't know that we were playing a conference game the first game of the season. And so, you know, it is contractually we're obligated to it. But we're excited about the opportunity to go to Miami. Uh, we're excited about the chance to open on national television. It is arguably the, the, the marquee game uh, in the black college slate this year. I don't know if there's a more anticipated game than the Orange Blossom Classic this year. And unfortunately, a team will have to leave the game 0-1, right? But every team that plays conference play will have that same dilemma. Uh, for us, it just it's week one. And, and so, but again, it's an exciting opportunity to go down there and play again. And we can't wait to get down because we feel like we have some unfinished business. We get our ice cream first. That's just the reality. <laughs> right. Of it. Which is okay sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're going to take it. It's hot <laughs> that time of the year. We, we'll go with ice cream. What is it like being able to lead up to that game, to be on the road promoting alongside Deion Sanders? You guys seem to get along well, seem to have a good relationship. Uh, that's got to be fun, promoting the game. No question. You know, uh, we feel that, you know, th this is the show, right? The game is what everyone's coming to see, and we want to get as many eyes on that game as possible. And so for us to be able to go out and market the game and shoot the promos and do all the things that we have to do to, to make the game a huge success, uh, we embrace that. Yeah, and so uh, no press conference this year. You know, obviously last year we did a press conference leading up to the game, uh, but I think the excitement is there, the anticipation is there. Uh, we'll continue to promote the game and sell the game. And uh, if anyone hasn't gotten their tickets, uh, it's not too late. Go ahead and get your tickets to the Orange Blossom Classic. Florida and Denver is Jackson State. Man, it's going to be quite the year. You got the University of North Carolina. Of course, we always got the Florida Classic. Uh, we got the Orange Blossom Classic. Uh, wherever FAMU is there, it's a classic. <laughs> it is. Uh, Coach, thanks a lot for uh, stopping by. But before we let you get out of here, man, uh, who's What's good? What are we going to do at quarterback this year? Coach? When I say, <laughs> I, I thought we were going to get. When we say we, I mean you. What, what are you going to do? At I, I thought we were going to get out of here without that uh, question. See, I, I waited till the I, end. I, I should have yanked my mic off and, and ran. <laughs> um, I tell you what, I'm looking forward to the quarterback competition. Uh, Rashawn McKay has done everything we've asked him to do. I heard he's in great, like, the shape of his life. Oh, no, I mean, he, he looks great. Physically, he looks, looks phenomenal. And you won't find a harder worker. I mean, you will not find a guy that's more committed to doing the right thing, lifting weights, conditioning, studying film than Rashawn McKay. And so if someone is able to unseat him, right now it looks like Jeremy Musa is the guy that has the best chance to do that, uh, it won't be easy. You know, because, again, Rashawn is going to give you everything he has and keep going and giving you more. And that's why we love him. That's why his players and teammates respect him. And, uh, and that's what Rattler Nation saw from him last season. Started out rough. The Jackson State game is a game that, that he definitely wants to forget. You know, um, we, that we all do. But after that, he bounced back, ended up throwing for almost 2,500 yards, 22 touchdowns, you know, did, did, took care of the ball on the through five interceptions, and, uh, and really played tough football. You know, Jeremy Moose is a very, very talented, cerebral young guy um, who has a, a lot of talent, a lot of ability, natural throw of the football, um, tremendous arm talent. And so it, it's going to, I think it's going to go down to the wire. You know, whoever, takes that first snap, there's no guarantee that they'll take every snap because, you know, when whoever gives us the best chance to win will play, and it may even be more than one guy. All right. Uh, bonus, bonus question. Even though he didn't get drafted, uh, we've heard a lot of good things out of Dallas with uh, Marquise Bell. You, do you foresee, I know you hope, of course, but do you really foresee him having, having, having something to say there in Big D this year? Well, I, I do. Um, one, because I've, I've had the, the, the pleasure of watching Marquise Bell for three years. Um, no one works harder. No one loves football more. Uh, no one puts in more time and effort to his craft than Marquise Bell. Uh, and he does it for the right reasons. You know, he has a goal to provide a lifestyle for his grandmother that she hasn't had before. And that's what drives him every single day. And so if he does not make the team, um, it, won't, it won't be because he didn't give it every single thing he has. 
It'll be because obviously they, they had to find 53 of the best football players in the entire world that are better than Marquise. Uh, I don't think that's the case. I, from everything we've seen and heard, uh, he's doing everything he needs to do. And uh, he's actually in Tallahassee right now. You know, been working out, training with the guys, so we get to see him even more, you know, work hard. So I feel really good that Marquise Bell will make the roster. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if he has a pretty profound impact on the team this year, definitely in special teams, but even on some scrim scrimmage downs on defense. All right, wishing him the best. We're getting excited. It's almost here, the kickoff to the season. A couple of big games to open up the year for FAMU. He's head coach Willie Simmons. Coach, uh, I didn't let you get away quick enough before we asked you at least one tough question, but thanks for hanging in with us, and uh, best of luck this season. Thank you. Appreciate it. Go Rattlers.